It is a very historic day. It was 75 years ago that the Washington Treaty was founded, establishing NATO. We're about halfway through the ceremony marking this occasion. We had uh, the military band playing the official NATO hymn, which is Esprit du Corps, which is a traditional military song about uh, military cohesion, about soldiers being one group together. Uh, and the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, just finished his speech in which he had the most direct criticism of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump and his America First policy that we've yet heard. He said that, yes, Europe needs America for its defense, but America also needs Europe. He was pointing out what Europe brings to the alliance and saying that America is stronger because of what Europe brings to the table. And he said he rejects the philosophy of America alone. He said it's a failing uh, ideology for America. Those were the most direct words we've yet heard from him. And he really had to address the elephant in the room because, as he pointed out, uh, NATO is more relevant today than it has been in the past three decades because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But at the same time, it is also more under threat than it has been in decades, not from without, but from within from Donald Trump and from Republicans in the United States who are casting aspersions on the existence of NATO and whether America should be part of it. So this anniversary comes at a very sensitive time for the alliance. Yeah, bearing all that in mind, Dave, it does come, doesn't it, as foreign ministers are, are really trying to shore up support for Ukraine. Yeah, I mean, that sensitivity of the alliance is under display right now uh, because of what the foreign ministers, all 32 of them, are discussing at this summit. Uh, so they're talking about this plan from Stoltenberg to move the coordination of Ukraine's military aid from Washington to here in Brussels. And that is very clearly because Republicans in the U.S. Congress have been blocking any further U.S. military aid to Ukraine for months now. And Donald Trump has said he would cut uh, helping Ukraine and he would, quote, end the war in one day, presumably by uh, forcing Ukraine to surrender to Russia. So the concern is that you can't keep having the short term funding and the coordination can't be done from Washington because Washington's future commitment to helping Ukraine is now under doubt. So this plan would set up a $100 billion fund that would be long term over many years and would be coordinated by NATO itself here in Brussels and no longer under the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, which is under the Rammstein format, which is technically outside of the NATO uh, umbrella and run by the United States. Uh, we didn't hear any objection about this from Secretary Blinken, uh, the U.S. Secretary of State yesterday. Uh, however, we have heard some skeptical voices about the amount and length of this fund, for instance, from Hungary's foreign minister, who was challenging whether this money is wise. Dave, thanks very much. Dave Keating, our correspondent, uh, joining us there live from Brussels. Thanks.